and welcome to another channel. For those of you new, my name is Dave and I work at Financial Services. And these videos mix in journey towards financial freedom, financial well-being, financial products so you, like me, can reach your goals sometime in the future. Now let's get into this latest video. Now this latest video is about my self-invested personal pension plan. Now I do have a pension plan with a current employer through auto enrolment, but I'm restricted to one, the contributions I can put in and the funds I can pick, quite selective, quite few. So I do my own personal pension so I can pick my own contributions and where my own funds are invested. Now it's not to say boast or brag or say look at me, but it's to give people an idea. If I can build a sizable portfolio, you can too if you take the actions and the steps and create some kind of plan. So let's dive into the portfolio and what our plan is all about. What is the aim of the plan? Well, it's an annual return of 10%. 2023 we we're looking for annual dividends of £4,500 and a year end portfolio value of £117,000. So how did we get on? Well, start of December we were worth 105660 End of the month we were worth 112625 So a profit in the month of £6,965. Annual return 2023 was 15.77%. But we did have some good months as we started off. We did have a dip, like we say, look at the chart, middle of the year, and we had a very good recovery during the month of December. Monthly contributions every month was a, a steady £200, and the government added tax relief of 25% of £50 each month. Our platform provider fees were around the same, £15, £16 a month, based upon the percentage of our portfolio valuation. But the fees, shall we say, are very low in comparison well less than 0.5 percent and where is the fund invested geographically well the portfolio predominantly uk based 81.66 percent in uk and europe 16.15 percent in americas and 2.19 percent in asia and emerging markets and if we look at the following chart where our dividends are received during the month so during the month we received 208 pounds 89 pounds year-to-date return of £4,413.17 pence. £86 below where we expected, but our portfolio or across our shares gives a yield of average of 4.28%. So which dividends we received during the month? Well, we received Sainsbury's the retailer, £48.08, pence, reinvested in 50 new shares. HSBC, £90.26, pence, 14 new shares. And BP gave a quarterly dividend of £31.9p, which we will reinvest within other companies. And Shell gave a quarterly dividend of £39.46, which again we will reinvest elsewhere. So slightly below our targets of £4,500 of the year. Now let's dive into holdings within our portfolios. Now our shares make up 77% of our portfolio, of which... 67% is in the FTSE 100 and 10% is in the FTSE 250. 15 shares, 10 in profit, 5 in loss, with a total share value of £86,330. Probably because where we picked our shares and what we know about, our portfolio is heavily weighted towards financial services. Our largest home is Aviva, the insurance company, 4,655 shares makes up £20,000, 80% of our portfolio, safe, secure, giving a good yield of about 8%, and it did increase during the year of 5%. Our next hold is Lloyd's, the banking group, 36,162 shares, nearly £17,000, 15% of our portfolio, and it was up the year 10%, but it did have a very good recovery at the year end, is paying a yield around about 4%. Our next holding is Greg's to Baker's, 283 shares, £7,000, nearly 7% of our portfolio, very cash rich, does pay a very good dividend, has been on a, shall we say, a growth pretty lately, away from the high street, but shall we say food courts, petrol stations, etc. And the shares were up 13% during the year. Our next holding has had a very good result, or result in 2023, HSBC, 
1149 shares, 7,300 pounds, 6% for the portfolio, but was up 35% during the year. Quarterly dividends were reinstated, and it will give a special dividend start of 2024, thanks to, shall we say, selling some assets within Canada. So it's simply by this business, but it is cash rich and it is going to distribute around about 10 pence a share during this year. Our next holding is struggled during the year, our worst performer is Drax. 1,254 shares, £6,000, 5% of our portfolio, but it's down 27% in the year. Profits have increased, it is cash rich, dividends increased, but not been a good sector for 2023. Back onto the insurance companies, legal in general. 2,098 shares, £5,300, 4.5% of our portfolio. The shares were up 8% of the year, but it has given a very nice yield of around about 8 9%, just like Aviva, we can switch off. We own Barclays shares, have struggled during the year. It's up around about 1%, 3,088 shares, £4,500, 4% of our portfolio has struggled against other banking shares within 2023. Our next holding has done quite good during the year, very cash rich, over a billion pound in profits is JD Sports. 2,500 shares, 4,200 pound, 3% of our portfolio, and it was up 14% during 2023. Our best performance share has been Sainsbury's. 1,248 shares, 3,800 pounds, 3.3% of our portfolio, but a nice return in the year of 45%. And then we own, shall we say, Shell and BP. 150 shares in Shell, nearly 4,000 pounds, 3% of our portfolio, but it was up 32% of the year. And some kind of comparison, we own BP. 542 shares, 2,500 pounds, 2% of our portfolio, but that share is only up 3% during the year. So as we said, some very nice shares. Let's just say Sainsbury's up 45%. HSBC, 35%. Okay. JD Sports up 14%. Greg's up 30%. One exception, shall we say, in the last year is Drax down 27%. But they were all done for a reason. And they're all companies we're prepared to hold for a long term view. We have no reasons why to sell any of them shares in the foreseeable future. And remember, these are my own personal opinions. If you like the videos, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. Now let's look at the funds we hold within the portfolio. Look at the following chart. We've now simplified our funds. We've gone from five to four and we've reinvested within existing holdings. One, simplify the funds, but two, because of poor performance in one fund, and also, it's to save costs. So, within our holdings, we own a legal and general technology fund. £10,600, 9.5% of our portfolio. It was done, shall we say, for tech sector, probably US-based, but during the year, a very good return of 53% within the fund. Our next holdings, one we've increased, increased lately, is Fidelity World Index. We can just switch off, it does what it says in the tip owns about 1,500 shares, we own £10,300, 9% of our portfolio, very low fees of 0.12%, it does pay a yield in April nearly 2%, but the fund was up 17% during the year, but it was done because we were, shall we say, solely UK based. We own a UK equity fund, Lenzo Train, bought on past records and great history over the past 10 to 15 years. £2,700, 2.4% of our portfolio, and it did increase 5% in the year. Against some kind of comparison, the FTSE 200 was up 2%. And our smallest fund, our only fund in loss, is a Bally Gifford Global Growth Fund. £2,500, 2.8% of our portfolio. It is showing a loss, but it was up 30% in the year, so the loss is quite minimal compared to what it was. But again, it was done for diversification. And hopefully when that fund's back in profit, we'll probably put that into our Fidelity World Index Fund to save, shall we say, admin costs and to simplify our portfolio. But again, all funds done for a reason. So as I said, 
all four funds were in profit during the year. Okay, well above the, the benchmark, shall we say, up against the S&P 500, which is up 25%. And also, shall we say, the FTSE 100, which was up 2% during the year. Now remember, these are my own personal opinions. We've done it, we've had a good year, thanks to what we said, a very good rally during December. Who knows what will happen during 2024, but we beat our expectations of our returns. 10% this year, we were nearly at our dividends, but we will rechange our goals during January 2024 for our new plan next year in 2024. So let's see what happens moving forwards. Remember, if you like the videos, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you again in the next video.